Here's a new rendition of the redstone. And this one is pinless design using magnetic fields. You can see on the bottom there's no pins. And on the top of the piston there's no pins. If I put the redstone block on top, it allows the piston to extend. The piston can be rotated so it gets powered from the side. And so now a block can be slid in order to activate another piston. When making the jab door, any way to activate the middle pistons without using any pins. And so this is the solution I came up with. And the redstone block here, it just has a magnet with the north pole facing down. For the piston, it has a Hall effect sensor that's able to detect that magnetic field. And so once it's able to detect that magnetic field, the microcontroller is able to read the Hall effect sensor and extend the piston. Here's the Hall effect sensor. This one has a south biased and a north biased. The north bias being the flat. This means if the south pole of the magnet hits this face here, then it will activate the Hall effect sensor. And only if the north pole hits this back side here, will it activate the Hall effect sensor. And so on the left is power in, the middle is ground, and on the right is the signal. The Hall effect sensor has a voltage regulator from 4.5 volts up to 24 volts. Even though it says 4.5 volts, I was still able to use the 3.6 volt battery pack. So here's a circuit I use for the Hall effect sensor. Right here, I'm getting a digital output, meaning when there's no magnetic field present, then five volts will stay consistent in this line. If the magnetic field is present, then the voltage potential within this Hall effect sensor will drop down. Also dropping down the voltage in this line while keeping five volts present here, allowing current to run through the resistor and through the Hall effect sensor. If no magnetic field is present, then no current runs through. Five volts stays consistent within this line here. Here it is on breadboard, and you can see if I bring the magnet close, then it will drop the voltage potential to zero. And so when it drops the voltage potential to zero, then no current flows through the LED. When there's no magnetic field, there's five volts through this resistor and through the LED goes down to ground, allowing the current to flow. By using the fact that the Hall effect sensor will only allow current to run through if there's a magnetic field present, you're able to invert the signal by taking off the ground. You move the LED to the five volts and add the resistor to the output of the Hall effect sensor. And so now when there's a magnetic field, it allows current to run through the LED. Again, this circuit here is just detecting the current running through the Hall effect sensor. Here the output will still be normally high, and when the magnetic field is present, it will drop to low. In order to visualize what's happening, here's a potential difference, and this will be your voltage potential. Here you can see the farther the charges are from each other, the more potential there is. Therefore, when the magnetic field is present, it's able to close these charges together, making them tighter, and reducing the voltage potential within the Hall effect sensor. In order to fully implement this into the redstone, you create an electromagnet. And electromagnets use wires that have a very thin coating. And so this enameled wire allows it to be turned around a ferrous material. Here I'm just using an M4 size screw. And so when current runs through these turns, then they create a magnetic field. In order to find out which way this magnetic field is facing, the right hand rule is used. And what this means is that if the current is flowing this way, being wrapped counterclockwise, and the magnetic force will be going vertical up, meaning the bottom of the electromagnet is the south pole and the top will be the north pole. Here I have it being wrapped this way, so the north pole is on top and the south pole is on the bottom. If you're planning to make electromagnets, I suggest using maybe 36 or 38. The higher the gauge, the lower the radius of the wire is, and the lower radius the wire is, then the more resistance that wire will have, allowing you to have less turns, but have the same amount of current going through. As is, the electromagnet draws a lot of current of 500 milliamps. And although it's able to work, a thinner wire would allow these magnetic forces to be more condensed and make it stronger. The magnetic field is based on amperage, not voltage. And it's also based on how many turns it has, since the turns will build up the magnetic field. Another thing to note is the contact. Right here you can see it's not able to lift the knife, but when it's connected directly onto the screw, it's able to lift it without a problem. After wrapping it, it pushed these pads out, and so now there's a little divot here. Right now it's pretty warm after being used for around four minutes at around 
500 milliamps. So again, I really recommend that you drop the amount of amperage. Here I have a 12 volt relay and you can see it's only using 150 milliamps in order to activate it. We can hear how strong the electromagnet is. The Shaki diode here is added as a flyback diode. What it allows it to do is allow current to continue flowing through. When the electromagnet is disconnected, then the magnetic field collapses, inducing a new voltage. And that induced voltage can end up being higher than what the initial voltage was, creating a voltage spike, damaging your other electronic components, such as your microcontroller. And so with this diode connected from the negative, to the positive, it'll allow the current to continuously flow through and allow the induced voltage to slowly dissipate within the electromagnet. Again, make sure that the diode is connected from the negative to the positive. If you set it up wrong so that it's connected from positive to negative, the voltage will go directly through the Shockey diode and down to ground, basically shorting out the power supply since it's allowing a lot of current to flow through this Shockey diode. Here I have the Hall effect sensor set up so you can see the current flow through when there's a magnetic field. And so now here's a circuit used for the piston. So here normally it's high when there's a magnetic field, it gets dropped down to low. So that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, as always, please let me know. And thank you for watching.